We're working on calculating the confidence interval now, and we're going to use the data from the example in the first video, so please make sure your notes are handy. Given the level of confidence, which is our variable c, the margin of error is the greatest possible distance from the point estimate and the value of its parameter that it's estimating. Um, and this is where we know the population standard deviation. Okay, this is key for this whole process. The standard deviation is known for the population. Um, here's the formula we're going to use. It's really this portion that we're going to use. And in order to use this, the sample must be random, and the population is normally distributed, or you have a sample of greater than 30. So these are the criteria and just the, the formula for what we're going to do, and we're just going to Finding the margin of error. Use this data in example 1 and a 95% confidence. So C is going to equal 0.95. Okay? And just dealing with this right here, 0.95. Remember in our notes I had written out um, or had a slide on what our confidence interval z-score would be? And for 0.95, that's going to equal 1.96. You can calculate it by making 95% be about the mean in the normal distribution, or you can use the table from the last video. Either or. So um, we want to find the margin of error for the mean number of hours worked by grocery store employees. Assume the population standard deviation is 7.9 hours. So the population standard deviation is 7.9 hours. Um, so looking at this formula, the margin of error is going to be the this, this confidence for our z-score, which we have here, 1.96. The standard deviation, which we have here for the population, which is 7.9. The only thing we're missing is n, and n was the number of data we collected, which was 40. Okay, So we have everything that we need to solve this problem. So the margin of error equals 1.96 times 7.9 divided by the square root of 40. So I'm just going to put this in my graphing calculator. I'm going to go to the right. 1.96 times, and I'm going to take 7.9 and divide by the square root of 40. On. Clear. 7.9 divided by, and I'm going to use parentheses to put the square root of 40 together, and I get 1.249 approximately, 1.249 approximately. I'm just leaving that in my graphing calculator, and I'm just going to multiply it now times 1.96, 1.96, and I get a margin of error which is equal to 2.4, I'm going to round to the hundredth, 2.45. So what are we going to do with that? I'm going to put my mean in the middle. My mean is 29.5. I'm going to add 2.45, oops, I didn't mean to put that right there, get rid of that. 2.45 to 2. Point, or 29.5, so I'm just adding my margin of error, kind of like we've done with the normal curve. And here I get 31.95, 1.95, and I'm going to just close it off. And then I'm going to subtract it from 29.5, 29.5 minus 2.45, and I get 27 and 5 hundredths. I'm just going to close that off. So what I would say is that with 95% confidence, the mean number of hours worked by grocery store employees is between 27.05 and 31.95 hours. So now I have a range to represent the average hours that I'm projecting upon my, my population. Okay, so now I want you guys to do it. <laughs> Obviously, we're going to change this to 99%. So the first thing you need to do is you want to figure out, it's the same problem, okay? You want to figure out your z-score based on the confidence level of 99%. Use that table. Our n is going to remain the same, and our standard deviation is going to remain the same. So figure out your z-score, plug it into your equation, solve it, pause the video, come back, and let's see how you did. Alrighty, here are my results, so you can pause it and you can watch it again. It doesn't look like I put a decimal there, but there's a decimal. Why aren't you giving me my decimal? Right here. So let's look at what happens as our confidence got um, larger. The more confident I became, 
the bigger the spread of the values. The less confident I am, the narrower of my values. So I don't feel like I'm saying that correctly, but hopefully the numbers are speaking for themselves. So the less confident I am, the narrower my range will be. So if I had 90%, my range would be even narrower for my confidence interval. And that's how you calculate your confidence intervals. Next will be graphing calculators.